The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. That I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of his, this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples were grumbling about this, said to them, Do you take offense at this? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? That it is the Spirit who gives the life. The, li the flesh is of no avail. The word that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning, those, uh, beginning who those were who did not believe and who it was who would betray him. And he said, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. After this, many of the disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. So Jesus said to the twelve, Do you want to go away as well? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So let us join together in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you today asking and seeking your will in our lives. So we pray that you would close our minds from all of those things that would inter in in interfere with our attention to what you have to say to us today. So that help us each and every day to apply your word to our lives that we may ever be ready to hear your word to us. It's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. So our sermon for today contemplates our gospel reading of John chapter 6. So grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So we begin today with a brief reading from Acts chapter 2. And at the sound of the great wind and the tongues of fire, the multitude came together. And Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed the crowd. Now when the crowd had heard all that Peter had to say, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So those who, were baptized, those who received his word were baptized and on that day were added about 3,000 people. Now I read Acts chapter 2 and I kind of say, as a preacher, I want to preach one of those sermons. <laughs> that 3,000 people coming to faith, coming to hear the word and coming forward in baptism. I don't know if you know that or not, but it reads kind of well on a pastoral resume to say, yeah, this one time I, I gave a sermon and 3,000 came forward for a baptism. That, I've never had one of those sermons. <laughs> But that's the very thing that we see in Acts chapter 2. 
Peter speaks this powerful, stirring message that cuts the people to the very heart, and they can't help but to respond what they have now heard and receive the very gifts that are freely offered to them. See, today in John chapter 6, we get the conclusion that has been our gospel reading for the last three weeks. (laughs) Jesus' very sermon to the people and speaking to them that he is the very bread of life. Is that today we don't get just the learner of Peter, but we get the master and the teacher himself. We get the Lord's powerful sermon from Jesus himself. And so how do all things end in this very word that is there? Then what do we hear but those very words from John chapter 6? So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no life. When many of the disciples of Jesus heard this, they said, This is a hard saying. Who can accept it? And after this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. So Jesus said to the twelve, do you want to go as well? Now this is quite the opposite reaction, right? So I feel like I've probably preached some of these sermons. (laughs) At least I've, I've felt that way. But I mean... Here's Jesus giving this stirring message. And what is it that we get in response? If I might paraphrase the very response of the people, yuck, and they walked away. What is this whole eat of my flesh and drink of my blood? What is all of this word that is there? Why is Jesus speaking in this way? I mean, how many people probably left right after this? If you can think about this, many are there. There are those that are among the 5,000 who had just been fed earlier in the very chapter of the miraculous feeding, the breads and the fish. I mean, what is going on here? What would cause Jesus to give this sermon? And what would cause them to now simply go Away. And so when we turn to that earlier section of this sermon, so we see the very crowd approaching to come and hear this message. But the question has to be asked of what is it that they are now seeking and searching in the midst of this? So the crowd now comes to them, comes to him not because he is wonderful, not because he speaks truth, not because of the fact that they simply love his words and love his truth and love all that is there. But if we go back to all of that very beginning of this chapter, is that Jesus had just fed them, fed them to their very full and their satisfaction, over 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish, and now, The last thing that they remembered was Jesus had sent his disciples away in the boat, is that he had sent them away to their homes and to now travel all the way back to their homes of Capernaum and all of the other towns on the other side of the sea. And Jesus had gone up into the very mountain to pray. The next day when Jesus shows up far earlier than they ever expected and all of a sudden in the opposite side of the sea, because they didn't know of how he got there of walking on water to the disciples in the boat, that they now come asking and seeking, when did you get here? And Jesus just calls them out of why they are searching and seeking for him. Not because they are there for the sermon, 
Not because they're there for the message or because of anything else, but what is it that Jesus begins to say? That when the crowd saw Jesus was not there nor his disciples, they themselves got into the boat and went to Capernaum seeking Jesus, and Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. They didn't see Jesus as beautiful or lovely or desirous or one who offered truth or life, that he was their meal ticket. So they came seeking and searching for the very fact that in their life, just like so many of us, that they were always seeking for something to fill what was empty inside. Not just their stomachs with food, but all of their lives they found themselves going from this to that, trying to find that thing that would finally put life in order seeking in relationships or family, seeking in jobs or work or homes or possessions or all kinds of things to finally find that peace, that stillness of joy. And Jesus was just one more stop on the way. So how do we approach Him? Do we approach Him because He offers truth? and hope, and that He is beautiful and lovely and pure and holy and honorable, and we approach Him out of good? Or do we approach Him as in just one more stop on our list of errands and places that we need to go? So we need stuff from the store, and we need stuff from the grocery, and yeah, maybe we should throw church in too, because we need a little bit of that as well. See, what were they seeking? They were seeking, they come seeking satisfaction, seeking fulfillment, seeking something that is lacking within their life. And many times is that we might not be as crass, (laughs) but don't we sometimes come to God in the same way? That we need Him to do something for us. (laughs) that we need Him to offer something that we lack. And so we come and we seek and we search and we find, but do we stay? Because now as they come, Jesus now offers this very word, you come seeking me because you ate your fill. Just like your very fathers who ate manna in the wildernesses that come and believe in the very bread of life that God has sent from the heavens for you, that I am the bread of life, come to me. And what do they say? What sign are you going to give us that we should believe in you in this way? Does anybody have a guess of What sign Jesus maybe just did in their presence that might give them an idea of that he is the bread of life, that he, I don't know, feeds his people in the wilderness? You know, feeding 5,000. Jesus didn't just foot the bill. There weren't Kroger trucks that just kept showing up and just like emptying out food. It's that Jesus took five loaves and two fish and fed them all, and yet they have the audacity to now come and ask, what are you going to show us? (laughs) And so Jesus presses the point. See, you could tell this isn't a Lutheran sermon that Jesus is giving because the crowd is talking back and forth with him. I wouldn't ask you guys to do that. I wouldn't expect that. (laughs) But throughout this sermon of Jesus that you hear from the crowd and you hear the grumbles and the things that they're asking and questioning and speaking to him about. Is that, isn't this Jesus of Nazareth? How is he going to give us of his flesh to eat? Now, it's not because they didn't take, you know, a literature class and they don't know what figurative language is. What does it say, if we can have our next slide? 
that just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. That this is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. But what does it go on to say? On hearing it, many of his disciples said, this is a hard teaching. Who can understand it? Is that what they said? <laughs> that who can get what this guy's saying? Did they not understand what he was saying? No. They understood that he was pointing to himself, that he is the bread of life. And sure enough, they go into icky places that we don't like to think about. You know, what's he talking about this flesh and blood and eating and ill? Yeah. But is that what Jesus is getting at? No. But on hearing it, they said, this is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? See, they, leave, they come seeking satisfaction, but indeed they leave refusing to accept the very thing that is now being offered to them. The very gift that is there. That once again, that Jesus now says that I am the bread of life, believe in me and you will have eternal life. And what do they say? Well, what work must we do to have eternal life? I don't know how Jesus didn't rip his hair out more. <laughs> so Jesus comes and says, I'm the bread of life. And they say, what sign are you going to give us? Jesus said that I am the sign that you, I have for you is that come and receive, believe in me. And they say, well, what must we do to now inherit eternal life? That Jesus comes offering a gift. I mean, just imagine this. Imagine that you are now brought into this huge, gigantic building. And before you ever take a step through the door, you already smell the beautiful and wonderful smells that are wafting out of this building is that you step in and you see the most beautiful buffet that you have ever seen before in your life. Everything better than grandma makes is now there, spread before you. And as you begin to reach for your wallet as the host welcomes you in, the host says, no, 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 put your wallet away. That this this meal is free. It's already paid for. Would you be one of those who now jump and now with that very excitement and joy now celebrate or would you be one of those stomping your feet and cursing how dare they? That I'm going to pay my way. That I don't want your charity that I will pay my part. Can you imagine somebody walking away from something like that? I like food. I would never dream of it. <laughs> but isn't that the very thing that is there? That Jesus now offers free gift of his grace, his promise. You don't have to work. You don't have to do. You just believe, trust, look to me. And they now say, who can accept it. But isn't that the very thing that sometimes many face as well? Hardship comes and we begin to doubt. Questions arise. Doubts begin to grow. Life changes, life becomes hard or difficult or all kinds of other things may happen. And now as we find ourselves asking the question, Jesus, if you offer me all of this gift for free, then where are you in this? That we find ourselves so often willing to say, Jesus, I believe in you but I don't trust you. That I confess you, but I won't let you have control. That isn't that the very thing that they now see here? The very come to this. Many have now walked away and wandered off. 
Jesus even has to go to his own 12, the closest among them, and say, do you want to go as well? That Jesus in this text comes to us and he asks you, what about you? Do you want to go? When words are hard and when answers are short and when you don't know what is going on, that will you still follow? Will you become, begin to be nervous and upset and worried and scared? Will you begin to be those that now wander off because you don't like it? You don't like where we're going. You don't like what is being said. You don't like how things are going. See, Jesus asks, what about you? See, I think the clash put it best. Should I stay or should I go? That's our third sermon point today. Is that when we find ourselves in the midst of those very trials of life, how will we respond? I mean, I hate to say it. How many are responding in this way in our age? Is it either because of the fact that, you know, I believe, I trust in Jesus, therefore, I don't need to live this Christian life. What about this whole pandemic, COVID thing? What, what has happened in the midst of not just our church, but many churches, when all of this happened, of churches shut down for a few weeks, and then we had some time of masks and others, that how many walked away? What about you? I'm not talking to those worshiping online and those taking answers for themselves and their situation. But how many are wandering off because of the fact that it is hard to accept what Jesus says or does? But what is it that he offers? That I am the very bread of life. I offer my flesh and my blood. That I give myself on the cross for all. So that all may be welcomed in. So that all may receive. So that all may now have. But do we get out our wallet and want to pay? Or do some of us begin to say, I don't want any of that. So Jesus offers to us today a gift. When things get tough and problems come, that will we rest in his trust? Will we let him have control? Will he be the one that will be allowed to be in front while we follow behind? Or are we always the ones who's charging ahead of God and saying, this is what you should be doing. Over here, this is that. Now, what does Jesus offer? This is the only answer that is needed. That my cross, my flesh and my blood offered for you is that by it alone shall you have life and have it to the full. By it alone shall you be satisfied and find peace. That may that very peace of Christ, of all that he has offered and all that he has done, and all of that invitation to come and follow, may that now give to you that peace of God that surpasses all understanding, that guards your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.